the footage you're watching is the February 20th March against the water charges in Dublin speeded up by a factor of four so that it doesn't take uh, a long time to play. Uh, basically I started recording the march at the uh, O'Connell statue and then walked up the length of it to reach the end of it just as the end was leaving Parnell Square. The march took place the Saturday before the general election is to take place and it's a good time to ask with the election drawing close, is this really going to bring the change we're looking for? Should campaigning for the elections have become such the big priority that it did? I'm inclined to say no, uh, and the reason for that is I think real change only comes from grassroots activity, from bottom-up and grassroots activity, which is in direct competition for resources in terms of time, money and effort with electoral campaigning. And in a while, we're going to be looking at some more footage from the demonstration and somebody from the Kildare group uh, is going to talk about the way he's seen electoralism affecting the campaign in Kildare and in particular the different paths taken by uh, the two different groups active on the ground in Kildare. As you can see, thousands of people took the streets to oppose Irish water and the austerity measures which have been imposed by the government here over the last few years. From Matten to Stony Batter, from Galway to Drogheda, there was a significant turnout of community water charges groups from all around the country. One group was carrying a Bolivian flag, which I noticed, and they had a banner saying, Bolivia dash Ireland, we did it in 2000, you can do it now, defeat water charges. Bolivia had a successful fight against the attempt to impose water charges there. The crowd marched from the Garden of Remembrance down O'Connell Street and then along the Quick Keys to Christchurch. After two hours in the streets, thousands filled Dame Street to listen to music and speeches from Right to Change. However, we disagree with the central plank of Right to Change, uh, which is this whole focus on the elections and the idea that some fundamental change can come about on Friday uh, simply because we swap over the Fianna Gael government for perhaps a Fianna Fáil Fianna Gael coalition or perhaps with some coalition involving Sinn Féin. Uh, but beyond that, I mean, what is the problem with elections as a route to change? Really, the major problem with elections is, in entering them, we are fighting on the enemy's terrain. The electoral system was set up by the ruling class in such a way that it dilutes mass participation. Instead of us organising for ourselves, we're forced to choose one or more leaders from amongst us and put these people up in order to represent us. Sometimes this works out OK, and sometimes this works out very, very badly. At different points in quite recent history, people have elected the Green Party into government and then the Labour Party into government, only to find, to their horror, that in power they were really quite indistinguishable from Fianna Fáil or Fianna Gael. I believe this cannot be explained through the language of bad leadership or betrayal, but rather we have to look at the way the system itself promotes those sort of transformations in political parties that sees the radical opposition parties of yesterday becoming the enforcers of the status quo of today. But as we approach the end of the video footage of the entire march, uh, let's move on to hear Brian uh, talking about the experience of the campaign in Kildare and the impact electoralism has had. Hey, no way! We won't pay! No way! We won't pay! No way! We won't pay! Uh, well, from what I've seen, I suppose the elections have meant that a lot of campaign groups that would ordinarily have been going out and staging events that would be directly related to defeating the water charges and Irish water, they would have had to, for actually quite a long time now, I mean a, a, a period of months rather than just weeks, they've had to really be focusing their efforts more on raising the profile of a local uh, or even a national uh, candidate um, rather than focusing on, yeah, like I said, the direct action aspect. So I suppose that's kind of taken from it. The other notable thing about Saturday was, of course, the media coverage of the demonstration. We talked to Tom on the day about how he thought that was going to go. Yeah, it's terrific to see so many people uh, turn out today on what's particularly kind of cold and wet um, afternoon. Um, but I wonder how this protest is going to be covered in the newspapers tomorrow, if it's going to be covered at all. I mean, we've seen over the last couple of weeks, um, for example, with the Lewis workers out on strike, how the mainstream media, uh, the regime media always covers it in terms of traffic disruption, um, rather than uh, from the perspective of workers standing up for themselves um, to take back um, some of the profits that are going uh, to their bosses. 
So similarly today, I, I wonder, uh, will the media even cover this demonstration? And if they do, will they get beyond the usual kind of narrative of, um, you know, just traffic disruption on a Saturday afternoon? Um, so I, I think as anarchists, we really feel it's important that we create uh, new kinds of projects for sharing news and information about the campaigns that we're involved in that we think are important for creating a free society. And Solidarity Times is just one example of independent media um, at the moment. <laughs> There's no denying that for a lot of people, Friday's elections it will be an opportunity to throw a very much hated government of the Labour Party and Fianna Gael out of power. But that's just as we threw the governments of Fianna Fáil and the Green Party out of power years beforehand. We need to get off the roundabout and set about creating real change. As well as the uh, South Quay being full of protesters, as far as you can see in both directions, the march has looped around at this stage and is coming back down Dame Street. Uh, if we go up to City Hall and have a look, we'll catch up with the back of the march as it's coming back down. It took about 40 minutes to pass any single spot. Though they fought for social justice, they were slaughtered for a Down in the hair, crying. Oh, what did they die for? Our 